First of all, thanks for this. So in this video, someone asked me if I can make a manga animation on DaVinci Resolve, and the answer is yes, I can. So here's what we're going to create. I know it's not that much good, but hey, it's the first time I am doing this. So let's get started. Okay, so get you manga panel ready and head over to Photoshop, or poor people like me can use PhotoPay. Create a new project of 900 by 900 pixels. Then simply drag and drop your manga panel into the project, adjust until it fits properly, and go to Files, Export as, PNG and save it. Search for an online background remover. I'm using Adobe Express for this demonstration. Upload your image and wait for it to load. Keep in mind that the initial result might not be perfect, but don't worry we'll refine it further in PhotoPay. Click on the download button to save it. Now in PhotoPay, select the eraser tool and begin removing any remaining unwanted elements from the image. Once you are done it should look like this. Now I would recommend you to save it before moving to next step. Navigate to the layer panel and duplicate the layer by pressing Ctrl plus J. Then, select the top layer and choose the erase tool. Begin erasing the parts you want to animate. In this case, we'll remove everything except the head. Duplicate the background layer again. This time, I'll retain only the body. Repeat this process until you have all the desired parts isolated. So here I've cut out all the parts which I want to animate. By the way, you can easily organize and name these parts by double-clicking on each layer. Before we proceed, let's save all the isolated parts except for the head and body. We'll need to do some painting on those two. To save one part at a time, you'll need to hide the other parts first. Let's begin painting. We'll start with the head. Select the paintbrush tool and start painting. Remember to sample colors from nearby areas to maintain consistency. Ensure you're painting on the correct layer. As you can see, I am on the tie layer. That's why it wasn't painting. Don't do this mistake, it's really annoying. Now let's begin. I will start by removing the hair tail. While painting, some areas might appear imperfect, but don't worry, as they will be hidden behind the top layer. If you're using a different image, ensure the parts you've cut out are visible, and if they overlap, make sure to paint on the bottom part. This way, the two objects will remain separated. So I've completed painting all the necessary parts. Now if you're using DaVinci Studio, you can skip this part and directly use the Warper tool, which is similar to the Puppet Pin tool in After Effects. However, for those who don't have DaVinci Studio, let's proceed with creating an eye-opening animation. Next, let's add a green screen image and place it at the bottom of our layers. Then duplicate the head layer and hide the bottom one. Select the top layer and carefully start erasing right under the eye. Take your time with this step. Once done, it should look like this. Now right-click and convert it into a smart object. Then head to the Filter tab and select Liquify. Simply drag the eye part downwards to create the illusion of a closed eye. Adjust the density if the effect appears too blurry. Once satisfied, close both eyes and click OK to apply the changes. Next, we'll use different values of fill to create multiple frames for the eye blink animation. Start by setting the fill value to 100%, which represents the eyes being fully closed. Save this as I blink 1. Then, decrease the fill value to 90% and save as I blink 2. Continue decreasing by 10% each time, resulting in a total of 11 parts for the animation. I've also followed a similar process for the lips, but this time, I decreased the fill value by 20% for each two frame of the animation, but yours might be different so do according that. Open the DaVinci Resolve Media tab and drag and drop all the eye blink images. They will automatically arrange themselves. Once done, head to the edit page and add the first clip. Then move the playhead to frame zero. Press the right arrow button to move one frame, then cut the layer here and delete the remaining. Repeat this process for all the remaining clips. Once done, play it back, and you'll see that our eye-opening animation is complete. I will do the same for lip layer, but this time each part will be two second long. After completing the animation, navigate to Fusion and add the Delta Keyer node. Then, select the green background to make it transparent. After removing the background, I return to the edit page and save the last frame of the head layer as a still frame. Since I want my animation to be at least 3 to 4 seconds long, this step ensures a smooth transition. You can do the same if needed. Once done, select your clip and convert it into a compound clip. This step is important, so don't forget it. If you follow the earlier step to save a still frame, you'll need to go to Fusion and add a Luma Keyer to remove the black background. Otherwise, you can skip this step. Before starting the animation, on the edit page, add the body layer below the head layer. Select both of them then create a new fusion clip. Then in fusion, arrange the nodes first and rename them by pressing F2 on each node. Add the next part of the character. Connect it by creating a merge node then name it as well and repeat this process until you've added all the parts. After completing the node setup, your nodes should look like this. Now to animate the full body, click on the last merge node and add a transform node. In the inspector window, move its pivot point to the belly part of the body. 
Then go to frame 0 and add a keyframe for the angle. Change its value to around minus 10. You can adjust the size and position to ensure everything stays within view. Next go to frame 40 and set the angle to 0. Now move 5 frame backwards and change the angle to 1 or 2. Open the spline editor, select the angle, and press S, then create curve just like mine. Let's preview. Return to frame 0 and select the merge node connected to the head. Change its angle to 4. Then, move to frame 40 and change it to 2. Finally, at frame 50, set it to 0. Repeat this process for the remaining nodes. After completing these steps, your animation should resemble the example shown. If you feel your animation is too slow, open the keyframe editor, select all the keyframes, and move them a few frames backward. I will skip this step. Now open the spline editor, deselect the angle of transform node. Then select all of them together and press S to smoothen the animation. To give the hairs a natural airflow, select the first tail node and add a waviness node. By default, it may be too strong, so in the inspector window, change the scale to around 10 and the strength to around 1.5 or 2. Then copy and paste this setup to all the hair tail nodes. So here we are back on the edit page. I've made some adjustments to the clip and added a solid white background behind the character. That's all for now. If you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to check out my other videos.